For such a technologically and economically advanced country, Australia really doesn't like taking any great leaps of change without watching other countries test the waters first. And when it comes to any legal matters regarding death, our stereotyped adventurous spirit flies straight out the window. However, we do still have a few options, so let's talk body disposal in Australia. The methods a country has legislated for body disposal usually stems from that country's major religious and cultural groups. Now in Australia, our 2021 census showed that just over half of Australians consider themselves to be of a Christian faith, while 30% claimed no religion at all. And while Islam, Judaism and Hinduism all have very set methods for body disposal, modern day Christianity and the non-religious are pretty indifferent about the whole thing. With that being said, today we're going to look at what body disposal methods are legal and available in Australia. Cremation. It is thought that around 65% of Aussies are now choosing to be cremated. And we just did a video on all the various things that you could do with your cremated remains, so go check that one out. Cremation means sending you, along with your casket, into a 1000 degree crematoire for around 90 minutes, depending on your size. Once you've been reduced, you're pulled out and left to cool. Should some of your bones have been a bit stubborn and remained in a chunky form, they're pulverized before all of you is swept up and put in a lovely minimalistic container and once again you're back with your loved ones. Does make you wonder if at any point during the whole thing you're uh, perfectly cooked? You know, like for just a second. <laughs> Casket burial. This is often called traditional burial, but I guess that really depends on your traditions. But this is your run-of-the-mill kind of Christian burial. So things to keep in mind is that you're only buying the right to be interred in that plot. You're not buying the land outright. This is because most burial plots are for a fixed term, usually 25 to 50 years. However, you can have more than one person in the plot. With most cemeteries being a business, did you really think it's all single level down there? Now, how much is this going to cost you? Well, that depends on your cemetery location, the section in the cemetery where you wish to be buried, the type of burial plot, the style of burial plot, and the terms of the right of interment. But for the plot alone, that could be anywhere between $3,000 and $50,000 depending on location. I don't know, maybe the deceased didn't want to get mugged while they were out haunting. But these don't include the cost of actually getting you in the ground. That could easily be another $5,000. And you haven't even paid for the casket or funeral yet. Mausoleum. Cemeteries with mausoleums usually cite Italian and Croatian families as their biggest users. For some reason, above ground burial never really took off in Australia. If you have never seen one, they're usually like a grand house with a lot of lockers made out of marble. There's also a place for the living to sit and enjoy spending time with their loved ones. There are many configurations depending on the mausoleum that you choose, but you could spend time in your niche alone with your significant other once they pass, or you can buy a family sized niche and wait patiently for many years. The important thing to know about mausoleums is that you will have to be embalmed if you choose to use one. Green burial. Often called natural burial, this isn't unusual. This is the norm for the Islamic and Jewish faiths. But it has seen a revival in the past decade as more people become environmentally conscious. A green burial with no particular faith attached to it means a body that is not embalmed and without a solid casket. Australian law requires the body to have an outer cover regardless of where it's going. This isn't a problem though for natural burial as there are many easily biodegradable options out there from wicker coffins to cotton burial shrouds. A quick Google search will give you many, many options. Now it should go without saying, but a natural burial can't just be in the bushland behind your house. It has to be in a legally defined green cemetery. It also helps to have gone through a, shall we say, green friendly funeral home. And I'll link that below. Burial on private property. This is going to require a lot of cooperation from your local council, but it can be done. Each state and region has its own laws on this, but usually the land has to be larger than 5 hectares and there has to be a distance of at least 20 metres from any building, structure or water well on the land. You need to make an application to the local government that gives reasons as to why the deceased cannot be buried in a legislated cemetery, the proposed date of burial, the GPS coordinates for the proposed burial plot and photos showing the proposed burial area to be a recognisable burial site. 
essentially it has to be very obvious that this is a legitimate grave and you're not hiding a murder victim burial at sea this is another one of those that you've probably seen in movies but in real life is actually a bit different firstly you need a permit and there is a cost of just over sixteen hundred dollars next in australia the body must not be embalmed and it's to be sewn into a shroud that is made of very strong material and weighted enough to ensure a rapid sinking and permanent submersion of a body this isn't easy once they start decomposing bodies really love to float and they're very good at it next sea burials are only permitted in waters of depths greater than 3,000 meters additionally the site cannot conflict with any other uses of the sea such as trawling or fishing grounds the whole thing can be a logistical nightmare so it is better off for you to use a funeral company that specializes in sea burials if this is what you want water cremation your typical fiery cremation aren't the most environmentally friendly things so this might be a better option for you there is only one company in Australia that does this and I'll link that below so water cremation is the more memorable way of saying the scientific term alkaline hydrolysis and in a nutshell that means the process of having your remains dissolved in a hot chemical liquid bath the body is placed on a tray in a large oven like machine that is then filled with heated water and potassium hydroxide for around five hours with all organic matter dissolved the remaining bones are taken out and pulverized just like they would be for a traditional cremation to create the ashes the process itself costs around six thousand dollars cryonics yes you too can be frozen in australia's first cryonics facility which opened this year and all for the low cost of hundred and fifty thousand dollars plus an ongoing 350 dollars fee for every year that you're in there so what is it to quote the website Cryonics is the preservation of a human body at cryonic temperatures in the expectation that the future medical te technology may be able to repair the accumulated damage from aging and disease at the molecular level and restore the patient to health. Okay, so it screams death denial, but hey, it's your money. If this sounds like you, the company website is linked below. And if it doesn't sound like you, I would still suggest reading their frequently asked questions page. Donating your body to science. If you want to help out our health and science fields, then this may be for you. Donating to science is going to require you to register as a future body donor long before you die. And there are quite a few steps involved before you're able to be dissected by some young, bright medical students. But first, let's get a myth out of the way. You are not going to be blown up from military training. Let's make this clear. Australia has very tight regulations and restrictions on who can be in possession of body parts. In this case, usually the particular universities. All those horror stories that you've heard are usually from the USA, where basically anyone can open a body chop shop, which results in people getting sued for blowing up grandma on military practice. Anyway, that's not gonna to happen to you. So back to the dissection rooms. I have linked below a page with all the accepting universities and each of them has their own set of rules but they are very broad so don't panic however you must keep in mind that depending on how and where you die plays a big part in whether they will ultimately be able to accept your body it also means that likely you will not be able to have a funeral with the body present as it needs to arrive at the university in no more than 48 hours after your death moving away from the dissection room now if you donate your body to Sydney's University of Technology, there is a chance you could end up on the body farm to help with forensics research. Now, this can't be guaranteed, of course, but if that's what you were hoping for, UTS is where you need to sign up. Repatriation. If you are a regular flyer, you've almost certainly been aboard a plane with a corpse in tow. Repatriation of a body is often necessary to return the body to family or to the person's home country. It is one of the many reasons that you should always have travel insurance because this is an expensive task costing anywhere between five thousand and fifty thousand dollars depending on the destination additionally the body must be embalmed and sealed in a zinc lined coffin or a metal casket and none of that is cheap usually though it is worth it for the family to have that loved one home with them so there you have it 10 ways to legally dispose of a body in Australia. What looks good to you? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for joining Gary and I here at Taboo Education. Like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you again soon. Now go talk death.